In this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion about the tissue level of organization. And specifically today, we're going to focus on the connective tissue. As always, remember, these are the learning objectives you want to be able to execute before you proceed to the next lecture. So let's go ahead and start talking about the special characteristics of connective tissue. Okay, so what are these special characteristics? Well, there's a few we want to talk about. So in connective tissue, there are very little cells, and there is a ton of extracellular matrix relative to each other and relative to other types of tissues. These are the cell types that you could have. We'll talk about the functions uh, of those different cells as we proceed. And then this is the extracellular matrix. It's composed of something called the ground substance and something called uh, a fiber. Second, the extracellular matrix is composed of the two substances I just mentioned. So that's the second char uh, characteristic, right? Ground substance, fiber. We'll talk more about those in a second. Uh, really, the ground substance, in short, is sort of the fluid in the background, and the fibers are the proteins that extend throughout that fluid, almost like ropes extending uh, through an ocean or something. Okay, the third thing is that all connective tissue originates from a type of embryonic tissue called mesenchyme. That's a third characteristic. Okay, so what are the structural elements of connective tissue? So let's look at a big picture statement, sort of a forest statement here. Uh, connective tissues differ from each other, that's what I'm comparing them to, in their physical properties because of the differences in the types of cells and the extracellular matrix that they have. Again, function follows form, right? We're saying if you change the structures that are there, it's going to change the function that that tissue can do. And that's the case of different types of connective tissues when you compare them to each other. In most connective tissues, now except blood, that's an exception, something called the primary cell produces the extracellular matrix. And I'll show you some examples of these now. So in connective tissue proper, there's many things that we call connective tissue, right? But in like connective tissue proper, uh, a cell called the fibroblast produces the extracellular matrix. If we talk about cartilage, something called a chondroblast produces the extracellular matrix. If we talk about bones, something called an osteoblast produces the extracellular matrix. If we want to say what prepares these uh, matrices, so it doesn't produce them, but repairs them, it's the exact same word for all three, but we add the ending site, right? So we have a fibrocyte does the repair and maintenance. A chondrocyte does the repair and maintenance in cartilage. Again, notice the site at the end. And then finally, an osteocyte does the repair and maintenance in bone. Remember, uh, this is different. All of these are sort of different, right, than blood. Blood's sort of the oddball. So the primary cells in blood, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, the platelets, they do not produce the extracellular matrix. Okay, so what are the structural elements of connective tissue? Let's go back to this slide and let's zoom in on some of these categories and talk about them for a little bit. Okay, if we talk about the fibers, one type of fiber is something called a collagen fiber. You'll notice that this collagen fiber you see right here is a little thicker. It is, uh, provides tensile strength, right? Tensile strength, so like pooling strength. Something a little bit thinner, uh, a little more rubber-like, is called an elastic fiber, right? And this provides some flexibility. Then we have a reticular fiber. This gives some um, support and covers things. The ground substance is usually a gel-like material, right? So it's sort of like, uh, almost like a gelatin, like a jello, you know, something like that. Okay, the exception of this is blood. So in blood, something called plasma is the ground substance. And it's produced by other cells than the primary cell, right? It's produced in other organs, and it can be transported from an external source. So remember, blood is sort of the oddball when we talk about this, um, this type of connective tissue. Okay, let's talk about the different types of connective tissues uh, that you can find. Okay, so here's a huge chart about the different types. So it's a very, very busy chart. I know it is. I want to point out a few things you want to focus on here. And these are the things I want you to focus on for lecture. When we get to lab, we're going to be identifying these different pictures and comparing and contrasting these different pictures from each other. So let's talk about the huge grand category we call connective tissue, right? So a huge category. When we talk about different subtypes of connective tissue, we ask ourselves different questions to differentiate. The first question is, where are the cells located in the matrix? And there's three answers we can give, and this divides the connective tissue into three different kinds, right? And then there's further subcategories um, after that. But if it's connective tissue proper, we're saying the cells are in direct con contact with the matrix. So directly in contact with the matrix, they're touching it, if it's connective tissue proper. The second category, notice this little line extends all the way down the middle here, that second category is blood. So this is a different one, right? If the cells are suspended in the matrix, they're not touching it, but they're like floating in it, then we say it's blood. If the cells are in spaces in the extracellular matrix, and these spaces are called lacunae, then we're talking about either bone or cartilage. 
right? Either bone or cartilage. Okay, so those are the first uh, three uh, subcategories that you could have of connective tissue. Let's look at each subcategory and go a little bit further, okay? So the next subcategory, if we look at um, connective tissue proper, so let's go back to this one right here, and if we're going to say what are the sub subcategories of that, we could have loose tissue, where the fibers are loosely dispersed, or we could have dense, where the fibers are packed very uh, densely together. And the pictures underneath those really show you the difference. Let's talk about the function of each of these. So if we have fibers that are sort of loose, really what they do, if you look right over here, they wrap, they cushion, they support. That's sort of what they're doing. Rather, if you have um, fibers that are densely packed together, they're strong binding uh, tissues. The pictures themselves, don't worry about them now. We're going to hit those in the lab very, very soon. Uh, but I want you to notice the differences here. So everything I'm highlighting here is what you want to know from this particular slide. I want you to know the categories, the subcategories, the functions. Okay, let's look at blood. What's the function of blood? And there's no subcategories of blood at this stage, but what are the functions? Transport gases, nutrients, uh, signaling molecules, get rid of waste, right? Fight infections. That's sort of the, the function of blood. If we go to the third category here that we started with, the third main category, uh, bone and cartilage, we could differentiate between the two. So if it's bone, the ground substance is going to be calcified. So that fluid-like substance is going to be calcified. It's going to be hard, right? Then we know it's bone. If it's more gelatinous, more like jello, then we say it's cartilage. Then we say it's cartilage. What are the functional differences? Bone is strong and stiff, whereas cartilage is a supportive tissue, right? It resists compression and tensile forces. It gives you a little more give to it. Anyway, so everything that's highlighted on this slide, this is what you want to know. The pictures themselves, you know, in other words, saying, I want to look at this picture and I want to know it's adipose tissue, or I want to look at this one, know it's uh, elastic connective tissue, or I want to look at this one, know it's bone, or I want to know, look at this one, know it's highland cartilage. Those we're going to do in lab, okay? But for lecture, I want you to know the highlighted portions in red, know the categories, the subcategories, the sub subcategories, right? And know the function and the location. Okay, the final thing we want to talk about in this lecture here is we want to talk about the function of mucus, uh, uh, serous, and cutaneous membranes. Okay, so what are the classes of epithelium that we could talk about, right? Something that we sort of uh, didn't really talk about in, in a previous lecture I want to hit right now. So we're going back to epithelium a little bit now. Okay, so what are we talking about? So we're going to talk about, there's three different categories here, classifications. So one is a cutaneous membrane of epithelium. And a cutaneous membrane is something like the skin. So what it's saying is it's something that covers the body surface. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward, actually. The next category is something called a mucous membrane. And you find mucous membranes when they line cavities, right, that are inside the body, but they're cavities that are open to the outside of the body. So, for example, uh, the, um, the esophagus, right, the mouth, uh, even the lungs, right, ultimately they're open to the outside of the body because air can pass in through all those different structures. Uh, food can pass in through the esophagus, right? So those are mucous membranes that line those, and they help fight infections, right, if you get an infection. Okay, the next one here is something called a serous membrane. And we've discussed this a little bit before, right? And these serous membranes line body cavities that are closed to the exterior, and they help provide protection. So, for example, in the lungs. Remember, the parietal surface, that membrane is always the outer one. The visceral membrane is always the inner one. And the cavity is between the two. Okay, so that's our continuation on the tissue level of organization. Here we talked about connective tissue, uh, and I did cover a few things about epithelium at the end there, uh, just to, to you know, rehash those. As always, remember, before you proceed, you want to know these learning objectives. You want to be able to execute these before you proceed to the next lecture.